Chit of Hadling is here today with a bit of an identity crisis. This is another video using JST's gear. So at this point, I'm wondering why I do even have my own gear. Today, I'm talking about the Moeller 32 slash 2 times. And this one was fully rigged with the Rapido FMJ and Rapido FVD 16A. I shot these tests while in Japan and editing it together was a bit of a good time travel. All right, Japan might be a small place, but it's still pretty big. So this was on our way to Hiroshima and the day we spent there. Timeline wise, this was shot the day before I shot with the Hypergoner. It's a smaller scope and even adding the FMJ, it did not feel too heavy. It actually felt easier to handle. Focus was locked to infinity and all the focusing was done on the FVD. This is a pretty good projection scope and I don't have much to say about shooting. This footage was also shot S-Log and I used the Phantom LUDs to quickly create this look. You can find more info about them in the description. The Moeller 32 slash 2 times is a lens full of catches. It goes by a few names. I had one named Vidoscope, while JSD's was a plain Moeller. There's also differences in focus markings and a completely useless version. So let's get the basics out of the way. This is a 2 times projection scope. It's small and light, weighing 390 grams or a pound and it's a breeze to carry around compared to some of the other stuff I tried in previous videos. It has 39 millimeter threads on the back, which makes it easy for clamps and alignment, but there are no threads on the front. It also has these notches right around the front, which make life harder to get a front clamp to fit snugly, hence the FMJ. When we got to the subject of focus, things get sketchy. There are mainly two versions of this lens. The first version, which still goes by multiple names, has focus markings in either feet or feet and meters at the same time, and minimum focus at 1.4 meters or 4 foot 10. Focus throw is about 330 degrees, so quite long. The other version of this lens, regardless of the brand written on it, has no focus marks. This is a Telesini version of the lens with very specific uses and it's almost useless to anamorphic shooting as it is unable to focus on infinity. The dead giveaway to the Telesini version of this molar is the recessed rear element you can see in these pictures. Many thanks to Ollie Camber for the photos and many other members of the anamorphic shooters group on Facebook to referring to the difference between these otherwise identical looking lenses. So be careful when buying one of them. This lens has always been a random roll when it comes to prices. Maybe it's because of the different versions. Since early 2018, these molars soared to the 600 to 800 range and stayed there. It sounds pricey, but just like a Koa, it's amazing what this little lens can do. So the price is justified. You will find plenty of good footage from it. Image quality is excellent at the center, with any focal length and aperture, but it drops towards the edges 
only getting consistent sharpness across the entire frame when stocked down. Uh, the sharpness on this adapter makes it a great contender for a vintage scope on a smaller sensor. The flares are interesting. I had a vitascope which showed neutral coatings and the resulting flares were more of a muted purple, while GSDs had strong blue coatings and displayed much more saturated flares. On full frame, the Molar 32 clears the frame at 85 mil and vignettes heavily at 50 mil. Something in between should be good to get you cleared for 2.4 to 1, possibly a Gallius 44 at 58 millimeters. When shooting on a crop sensor, GSD has worked hard tweaking parts and is able to clear 25 mil on the GH5 shooting 4x3, so that's impressive. This was a fun lens to test. It didn't hinder my style of shooting like the heavier projection lenses. It turned out to be a lens full of exceptions and little details to be aware of. It's capable of rendering beautiful and sharp images. At the same time, it shows good vintage character. Good job, Muller. Not a surprise after the 1.5 Mullers though. All of these positive aspects are probably what drove up the prices of this guy last year, almost doubling it in the span of just a few months. What do you think of the Molar? To me, this sounds like a Koa killer for smaller sensors. It's compact and versatile. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and please hit the like button and help me grow this channel. If you're not subscribed yet and you watched this far, you should definitely hit subscribe because there's a lot more about Anamorphic here, including brand new reviews every Sunday. I'm Chut Fahedans, and I'll see you then.